So then, why the big smug smile? I said to Beverly, um, you know, should we put the fer uh, the camera on um, because uh, I'm going to do a ferry glide? And she said, well, you haven't done any ferry, apart from one ferry glide before, um, you haven't done that many ferry glides. Um, so we won't put the pressure on you. But I have to tell you, my ferry gliding was beautiful. Check it away. You're waiting for the ferry, Bev. Yep. Well, it's not across the Mersey, though. No, it's against Frankfurt Narrows. cracking job but we're here at um, Port Ferry and uh, which is uh, down at the bottom end of uh, Strangford Lock and uh, it says in the pilotage um, that you do need to ferry glide and I would totally and utterly agree with that statement so uh, the, the tide was taking me down so I was pointing the nose as Beverly said up and then I just came in and then I just put the power on oh it was beautiful cracking but anyway so we're having a little treat. We're treating ourselves to a night in Porta Ferry. We are going to treat ourselves to a night in Porta Ferry, but um, um, because we've got the fenders out, um, you know, out of the locker, Beverly decided to go and have a dig in the locker. And I think we have hopefully sorted out our uh, flux compass problem. Because it just seems to go get its knickers in its twist far too often. Um, but um, we have found these poles. Uh, but as you can see here, um, the decorating, the not the decorating pole, the um, deck brush really makes a big difference to the compass. Um, and this decorating pole that we have on Mr. Swifty makes a bit of a difference. So we're basically going to put Mr. Swifty on maybe a wooden wooden pole or something. But basically this has got to go um, because um, Annie really doesn't like them. Yeah, well, the thing is, um, the flux compass didn't have anything near it, but these were on the other side of a wooden partition and magnetism being what it is. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but Beverly's looked at everything else in the um, locker, uh, but these two were definitely our guilty parties. Well, this is Port Ferry um, Town Centre and it has all the uh, major essentials, a um, good stocked supermarket where you can actually buy gluten-free uh, goods, which is great for me, um, as well as the highly essential off-licence and pub. This is Port Ferry and it's a small marina which really only opens for the summer season. and. Um, It does have facilities, don't get me wrong, but because it's a part-time one and it's only a small one, it doesn't get a lot of traffic, I expect. Um, some of the facilities are a bit far apart. So the water point is back there and we just about have enough hose to do it. It'll get to the forward tank. <laughs> it's never going to make it to the rear. So where's all that mud coming from, Bev? Strangford Law. <laughs> and this is not the worst of it, was it? This is the clean bit. <laughs> yeah, we were anchored on a what's called a muddy bottom. Well, it's starting to get cleaner. So clearly um, the hosing is working. Yeah.
You waiting for the ferry, Bev? Yep. Well, it's not across the Mersey, though. No, it's against Strangford Narrows. But it is just so quiet here. I think Bev's going to have to be waiting a long time. I think Bev's going for a coffee. <laughs> really pleased that my ferry glide into Porter Ferry here was um, excellent if I say so myself. <laughs> Beverly and Prudence are, um, are uh, teaching me the, the wonders of ferry gliding. Uh, we've been, uh, I've also been, we've also been going out and looking at the ferry here at Porter Ferry because he's an absolute expert. If, if he can't ferry glide, nobody else can. <laughs> um, we went over to um, Strangford on the ferry and um, there wasn't very much to see at Strangford, um, but I did actually see a telephone box, which I thought was really cool because they'd um, decked out the inside as a little library. And I love quirky things like that. So, um, I think if you were going over to Strangford, you need to have more time than we do uh, because um, we're going out later tonight. So uh, I hope this rain lets off before we go. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> Prudence, along with the um, ferry uh, footage that we took, uh, will hopefully explain what um, the art of ferry gliding. And if I get it wrong, then you can then um, I'm afraid to say I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, um, when we were at Port on the ferry, uh, there was a strong tide going out to the Irish Sea. Prudence is representing me and Bev on the ferry. And this is the, the ferry uh, heading was going up into Strangford Lock. But not quite against the tide, it was off to one side. It was off to one side. Can you just exaggerate it for the camera, please? Okay, Thank so you. that'll do. It was at his. Um, he was going off to one side, but he wasn't actually going in the direction he was pointing. He was actually going towards a stick which was on the end of the um, pier, and we could tell that he was going towards that stick. Because behind the stick, it's not very good on the video, I do apologise, uh, there were some houses uh, which had a little door. And um, basically the stick relative the, to the door did not move. So we could tell that that is where we were actually going, was to that location because that was the not moving. So here's the track, the actual track. I'll just put that there for you. So this is the actual track of um, the ferry there. And you can see that it's pointing towards... Let's just move it towards It's not the, the actual house. track. Well, I suppose it is. It's, the, it's basically... Although he's going that way, yeah. he's actually going towards this door. But if the buildings were going towards um, Strangford Lock in this case, then it would mean that he would be going backwards. Is that right, Bev? Yes. He would be going backwards because the houses would be moving up. He's on the other side of the pivot. He goes the opposite way to the houses. The houses go into Strangford, he's going down the narrows. Yes. Whereas if the um, houses move down, down, then he's going up toward... He's going up. He's going this way. Yeah. Um, so what you're looking for is um, where an object, which is hopefully what you, where you're going, 
is stationary against the landscape behind you and that is where you're actually physically going regardless but because as i say the tide was going one way he was facing up the narrows but he was going towards the end of the pier and it was really good to sort of like see the different angles um just to get that into my head well beverly and i are um passage planning um to leave um strangford lock the coming out at high water slack which is what the uh piloted recommends um you will be coming into a north going current and that's why it, it recommends to go out at high water slack because you're going to go into a current that is favorable to you um but the only problem with that particular maneuver is that as you go further north a critical part of the sea, which is Copeland Sound, sets against you um, because it will be going s south uh, when, by the time you get there. And it means that you have to go round um, the islands, okay, and then go into uh, Belfast Lock. Um, but if you go at low water slack, Yes, you'll be going into a tide which is against you at the start. However, for the Copeland Sounds, you will actually have the tide in your favour so you can go through the short gap. It's a bit of a horses for courses and it just depends on how good your boat is and what weather you're going out into. But we basically decided that we will go at low water slack because that gives us the option of going back in. Whereas you can't do that at high water slack. You can't do that at high water slack. Um, but also the Copeland sound will be in our favour. And um, because we're going out at the um, at late at night, um, Copeland sound in our favour at what maybe midnight or one o'clock in the morning whichever time it is that we're going to get up there at i just prefer that idea than um you know sort of like getting there at the wrong time i know it'll be late at night so we won't be filming that bit but <laughs> i will film as we go down um some of the boys and things like that so well, anyway that's all right that's what we're doing well we're leaving port of ferry and um our dinner is in Mr D and that lives in this cupboard just here. So that is dinner is secured in Mr D and um, yep yeah, we're gonna go off. Okay let her slip.
and um, over on Cook's Tour, uh, Beverly's cooked some pasta and um, spaghetti bolognese, which is ideal for doing small portions because you never want to eat too much while you're under packing. 